May God bless you. So I was thinking, one of the reasons a lot of people nowadays reject hell, the existence of hell, is because of their own pride. Hell stands as this force that calls out people's pride, that of justice, of what is right, it calls them out. It takes away all of those false hopes. It makes clear, it shows those insecurities because they won't accept that what they are doing is sinful, that it is wrong, and that it is evil, and that it offends God. And so, sin, all sin, is an act against God. It's an offense against God. All sin is attacking this infinitely good God. And so, it's infinitely evil on our part that requires an infinite judgment it requires an infinite punishment and so we all deserve hell i deserve hell you deserve hell we all deserve hell because we have all sinned all have fallen short of the greatness of god of our father and so the existence of heaven and hell, those realities, that makes life itself here on earth much more important. Christianity would be an absolute waste of time if hell didn't exist. Why do you think St. Paul would be beheaded in Rome trying to save other souls? Trying to save his own soul? in the process if he would have just went to heaven anyway if those people would have just went to heaven anyway it doesn't make any sense at all and so let's think a minute here a lot of people nowadays as well they believe oh i'll just repent the last couple of years of my life i'll become a christian i'll start going to church i won't think of those excuses Oh, those excuses I have, I'm not going to go to church this Sunday. Those will suddenly disappear. Those excuses that I won't live out the Christian faith publicly in front of my family and friends, that will just disappear. Those, those weaknesses, those temptations, all of that, those sins, they'll just suddenly be gone. They believe that because they have weak faith at the moment. And so how weak do you think their faith will be once it's constantly beaten down, even more so than it is now? Just imagine the bottom of a ship, all those barnacles, they just keep piling up and piling up, or a disease that just keeps getting worse and getting worse. It keeps spreading. It grows and grows faster and faster, and so sin also does the same. Sin also does the same in a person's life. And so right now, when all of us, we're all in our youth, this very moment, we'll be getting older as time progresses. As I'm continuing to talk, time is going on. And so we're all running out of time. We don't have much time. We're losing time as I continue to talk about time. And so people think... Oh, I'll be able to repent the last hour of my life. However, there won't be much time during that last hour. There won't be much time to call upon God to let God's grace work through you. To make that effort to repent. To ask for forgiveness. To truly build up enough sorrow in your heart to truly ask for forgiveness. There won't be enough time that, that last hour, especially when people are dying. They become very sick. They become very weak. 
they become very anxious. They have other thoughts. They're thinking about other things. Oh, I don't want to die right now. I want to... I just want to live another day. I want to do this. Well, none of us know the hour nor the day of which we'll die. It'll come suddenly like a thief in the night. And it's coming very soon. Coming very soon. I may die in the next minute as I'm talking. You never know. And so we have to live authentically at all times as true believers, true Christians who have this fear of the fires of hell beneath us. But not fearing the fires. No. Fearing God. As the book of Ecclesiastes says, we should have the fear of God because that is the beginning of wisdom. So that fear is not a fear that a slave has of a tyrant. It's a filial, respectful fear that a child has for a loving father. And so, if we're truly living as Christians, we shouldn't be afraid of hell. We should have this authentic Christian faith that allows us to recognize that hell exists, that people will be in hell for eternity, people we may meet in our lives. But what inspiration does that provide us? How on fire does that make us? How inflamed do we become with the Holy Spirit who proclaim the message of God that souls need to convert, that people need to come back to the Catholic Church and become Christians, to live moral lives. That's a message that the world nowadays especially rejects. Christ has always been rejected by the world, but nowadays such pride exists and it will continue to grow as people become so isolated, they become so lonely. That's what hell is. God did not create hell. It's the absence of God. It's the absence of God. So that's the worst pain imaginable. And that's that, f that worry, healthy worry, that, that pain is a reality for any of us still living that we can be separated from God, that we have within our power that choice to choose between God and hell, between eternal happiness or eternal separation. And so, if even right now you're thinking, well, I'll just get better tomorrow, or I'll do this better tomorrow, you might be going to church every Sunday, but that's not good enough. Not good enough at all. We have to live as Christians 24-7. Not even a minute of our day should be spent worshiping the world. And so it's very hard to do, of course. Many of us fall throughout minutes of the days or hours even throughout the days. It's not the easiest thing. But we should rely on God's grace. and We should have that healthy, healthy, of course, and also true authentic belief that we are not done in this life. We still have a mission. We still have souls to save, to bring closer to God, to bring to the gates of heaven ourselves by our prayer, by our works, by our actions, and by our words. We should shine as lights on the earth, in our towns, in our family, so that people may see with urgency the shining lights of heaven as well as the shining and very bright fires of hell. So, may God have mercy on us all.